Hey everyone, welcome to the Why They Invested Healthcare Edition. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Today, I'm joined by Neil Littman, the founder and CEO at BioVerge. Neil, how are you? I'm doing great, Jared. Nice to be here today. Great to, to, great to have you here. I'm excited to chat more about BioVerge and some of the companies you invested in. But first, it would be great if you could tell the audience a little bit about your background. Sure, ha happy to. Um, so, you know, g going back to my undergrad days, I studied molecular biology, uh, worked in a virology lab, which at the time seemed rather obscure, but I guess it makes a little more sense these days. Um, I have a master's in biotechnology from Johns Hopkins, then made my way to uh, New York and did uh, healthcare investment banking for a bunch of years. So all my clients were emerging growth biotech companies. Uh, I, I won't bore your audience with uh, all the details of, of that. Uh, transitioned out to uh, a, a venture firm in, in California in the Bay Area called uh, Burl & Company, which had about 1.5 billion AUM at the time that invested in early stage biotech companies. Uh, was there for a number of years, left to join uh, a place called the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, which is a mouthful, uh, so we call it CIRM for short. Uh, I ran business development at CIRM uh, and was part of their executive leadership team. Uh, at that time, CIRM had $3 billion of funding to invest in early stage stem cell and regenerative medicine related technologies. Uh, so I worked a lot with uh, investors, uh, with uh, tech transfer offices at various universities like Stanford, UCSF, UCLA, uh, as they were spinning out technology. And, and the whole premise of CERN was to fund the valley of death and really help bring technologies from the lab bench to uh, first in human clinical trials. Uh, and so it was, it was sort of all, all of those things combined that sort of led to the creation of, of what I'm doing now. Really interesting. Um, well, part of the, part of the reason obviously we wanted you to come on, we wanted to hear about your background and we wanted that to lead into, uh, BioVerge. So I know you were talking a little bit, but can you give us, uh, even more of a, like an overview of BioVerge, maybe areas that you, you invest in, um, and, uh, you know, I was going to ask you this later, but we'll just throw it in now, I guess, what you really look for in companies that you end up investing in. Yeah, happy to. So uh, I think just dovetailing with my experience at CIRM, I'll, I'll just t uh, share a quick story about um, my inspiration for starting BioVerge, and I think it really leads to a lot of what we're focused on um, these days. And so when I was at CIRM, we funded a program at UCLA in Dr. Donald Cohn's lab that was uh, um, looking at a lentiviral gene therapy treatment to treat children born with severe combined immunodeficiency, or SCID, uh, which is more commonly known as, as bubble baby disease. Um, so children born with SCID do not have a functioning immune system. They have a life expectancy of about 20 to 25 years old. They're frequently in and out of the hospital with severe infections. Uh, you know, long story short, um, I got to know a little girl who was treated with this gene therapy uh, by the name of Evie. She would come to our board meetings at CERM with her parents and talk about her experience being treated with this gene therapy. Uh, when she was about one, I met her when she was about six years old and she was cured. Um, and she, she went to school, she had a dog, she lived a normal life, she has now a normal life expectancy. I'm like, wow, this is incredible. This is like science fiction, but it's science fact. It's happening today. Why don't more people know that this technology exists? Why can't more people support and invest in this type of technology? So, um, you know, that, just, just to sort of wrap up the story, that technology was spun out into a biotech company that went public at over a billion dollar valuation. So early stage investors did very well for themselves at that time. So, you know, leading to the founding of BioVerge, I sort of use that as my premise about, you know, really wanting to democratize access to enable more people to invest in that type of early stage healthcare technology, really for what we call the double bottom line. And that, that's impact, right? Impact on people's lives and financial returns, right? You know, we operate in the early stage VC asset class, which has been shown to generate outsized financial returns consistently and persistently across uh, various time horizons. So it's this whole idea that we can do well by doing good. Um, and, you know, furthermore, you know, I was pretty deep in the ecosystem and I was looking to, you know, start angel investing and, and trying to diversify my own, you know, pretty <laughs> minuscule portfolio at the time away from the public markets and, and add some, you know, healthcare startups to my own portfolio. And I, I had no really reliable sources of deal flow. Even if I could find good deals, I had no consistent way to diligence those deals. And it was more like a one-off basis. So I, I couldn't really go about building a portfolio in a, in a way that would give me a statistical probability of success. And so you know, I really found in that help more people do this. Um, so 
you know, Jared, to answer your question, our, our focus at Bioverge is, is really on this intersection of, of health and technology. Um, and so we invest in everything from pre-seed to more recently Series B stage deals uh, with a real focus on companies that are applying some sort of stack of technology to solve fundamental problems in healthcare. And, and that spans things like gene therapy and cell therapy, which I sort of classify as regenerative medicine. Um, it also expands to you know, digital therapeutics, which aim to combat the you know, epidemic of chronic disease in this country to AI-enabled drug discovery and drug development. And you know, happy to talk about a, a few of those examples in, in my portfolio. So uh, I think I answered your questions, but let, let, me, you know, did. let me know if not. <laughs> you, you did. And, and I want to shift focus now to exactly what you just said was really want to start diving into uh, three of your, your recent investments. Uh, if I butcher these, forgive me, uh, but uh, I think it was en Enveda or Envita um, Biosciences, Bionaut Labs, and is it Okre or Okre uh, Bio? Yeah, um, Okre Okre Biosciences. Okre. Um, okay. So yeah, I think there's um, there's a lot we can talk to. I'll just try to keep my comments at a relatively high level. So in Veda Biosciences uh, was a Series A round that we participated in that was led by uh, Lux Capital. Uh, and this company is, is um, in the AI-enabled drug discovery space. And what they were doing is really harnessing the power and complexity of the natural world uh, using things like machine learning and computational you know, metabolomics, which is sort of a, a fancy you know, buzzword. but um, basically, they're, they're using all of this information to come up with a new generation of small molecule therapeutics. And you know, the reason that I really like this opportunity, if you think about how drugs have been discovered throughout history, right, it, it's all essentially come from the natural world, plants, bacteria, etc. You know, ancient Egyptians first used the bark of the willow tree as medicine. If you fast forward today, that's the same active ingredient we use in aspirin. Um, you know, there, there are stories from, you know, Merck, you know, the giant pharma company, when they had employees who would go on vacation, they would actually pay them to bring back soil samples as a way to screen for new, new compounds, new medicines. And so if you think about what Inveda is doing is they're basically going about doing this in a much more systematic, much more high throughput manner using advancements in software and technology and things like, you know, ML and, and AI. And so that's what I really like about Inveda. I think they're, they're really doing doing this in, in a super high throughput way. Um, so really excited to see, uh, you know, see the future for Inveda. Uh, and again, that fits into this like AI enabled drug discovery bucket that we're particularly excited about. Um, Bionaut Labs was a series B that we participated in that was led by Kosla. Uh, Bionaut is developing a new treatment modality that uses these miniature or micro scale robots to deliver uh, biologic molecules or small molecules uh, locally to try to treat a variety of uh, diseases uh, really focused around the brain. Um, and so a, 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 a BioNot is this new modality, which is really a, a, a like this miniature robot that contains um, a drug that can be targeted to a very specific part of the brain to deliver that drug. So these little bionauts are custom engineered um, and they deliver different payloads to um, a, a site of a tumor, for example. So one of the areas they're going after is gliomas, which are a, a devastating you know, brain tumor that have very limited treatment options. Uh, they're also exploring this for uh, neurodegenerative diseases and things like uh, Parkinson's disease, for example. So if you think about how like an antibody drug conjugate works, right, an ADC, they're, they're you know, highly targeted antibodies that have some sort of toxic payload that is delivered to some sort of cellular receptor. It's kind of like that, that idea, but Bionaut is, is using these, these sort of micro robots as the delivery vehicle for these different payloads. So, to my knowledge, hasn't ever been done before. Sounds like science fiction, um, but you know this company is, is developing these these bionauts, and you know we're pretty excited about you know seeing their technology move into into clinical trials. Um, the other company, uh, Jared, that you mentioned is is Ochre Bio. Uh, we participated in their Series A that was led by Life Force. Uh, Cosa was also in, in that round, uh, and and Ochre is developing RNA therapies to treat chronic liver disease. 
Uh, and they have a, a platform technology based on the combination of genomics, machine learning, um, and really experimental biology on live human organs. And so they have built what they call the, a, a deep phenotyping platform. And so the concept is that by using live livers that they keep alive on perfusion devices, they can test their RNA therapeutics uh, in, in, in live livers. And so they should hopefully be able to get a, a better read if these therapies are going to be effective in humans, as opposed to using animal models or, or other types of preclinical models that aren't necessarily as predictive if that therapy is going to translate into human clinical trials. Of course, they do all that stuff too, but the, the real differentiator is using this deep phenotyping of human livers. Uh, I think they've come up with, don't quote me on this, but I think over you know, 200 plus uh, novel targets and they're you know, going through the validation process on those. And so again, I, I think you know, a, a lot of the types of technologies that we look at are really focused around how are we gonna increase the probability of successfully developing drugs in human clinical trials, right? So if you, if you can move that probability of success up even a couple percentage points, makes a huge difference in patients, makes a huge difference on the NPV and the, and the value of these programs and the value of, of, of the companies that are developing these programs. So a lot of these types of technologies are really aiming to increase the probability of successfully developing a, a therapeutic. So um, there, let, let me let me stop there. I don't want to get too nuanced. No, yeah, no, that was great, though. That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to I wanted you to explain more about these companies that you invested in. Uh, your, your eyes uh, were lighting up when you were describing, you know, the parts uh, of it, it, it seems like you do follow that trend, right, of companies that are actually trying to do a lot of good, but are also going to produce strong returns for investors, right? So even when you're explaining, it's, it's spot on, which makes sense why you invested in them in the first place. What, uh, what are some areas within the space that, that you focus in on that you're really excited about over the, like, let's say the next five years? Yeah, so I, I mean, I've been beating the drum of sort of regenerative medicine over the, probably the last decade since my time at CERN. But, you know, there, there were there was sort of a, a wave of uh, CAR T therapies that were sort of the first wave of cell and gene therapies that were approved for uh, rare hematological malignancies that had incredible response rates in, in patients that were um, otherwise non-responsive to, to therapies. Um, so I think that, that, was, that was just wonderful to see. There have been a wave of gene therapies that have been approved, a lot are in late stage clinical trials. Now, I think what we're really excited about are the sort of next wave of cellular based therapies that are moving into the clinic, that are in the clinic. Um, I mean, there, there was a huge announcement from a company called Altos Labs that, that I don't think they actually raised $3 billion, but they have $3 billion of committed capital for this idea of cellular reprogramming. Um, and so that's the idea that you can actually reprogram cells in the body to differentiate into other cells or reprogram them back to a earlier, younger, healthier state, for example. So I think that that whole field, I think, is still pretty nascent and I think is very exciting to us. Um, things like what uh, Inveda is doing, right, with this AI-based drug discovery, we've, we've seen the first wave of those companies uh, are now public, uh, right, so like the recursions of the world. Um, so I think, you know, any of those types of tools that can increase the probability of successfully moving a drug through the clinic is going to have a huge impact on the industry, are going to be create immensely valuable businesses in the process. So that's, that's another area that we're particularly interested in. And then the other one sort of that's tangential is this idea of digital therapeutics, uh, which falls in the digital health bucket. But are, are, these are things like software applications or apps that help nudge people into making healthier lifestyle choices through diet, through exercise. And it's really in an effort to combat chronic diseases. So things like obesity or diabetes, for example. Um, so I think that those are other areas that we're particularly excited about. Perfect. Well, I, I'm super excited that we were able to, to have you on the podcast. Hopefully we can have you come on again soon and maybe some of our other podcasts, but really appreciate your time here today and wish you and BioVerge all the best of luck and to keep making these investments in both companies that are going to produce strong financial returns, but also uh, ones that are doing a lot of good for, for society. Thank you, Jared. I, I appreciate it. I'm just going to put in one plug real quick um, mm -hmm. that if people are, are interested in investing in these types of companies, 
Uh, we are raising our fourth uh, access fund, which is a, a multi-company fund that will invest in a diversified set of these types of companies. And our whole thesis at BioVerge is, 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 is this idea of bringing science fiction to life. And, and we really are trying to democratize access to these types of investments. And, and Jared, it's just what you said. I mean, it, it is impact plus financial returns. And so that, that, that's our focus. And, uh, you know, we're always, always looking to uh, chat with new investors. And, of course, for any entrepreneurs out there, always looking to connect with new entrepreneurs. So uh, appreciate you having me on the show today.